Welcome everybody to the Fantasy Golf Insider webcast and podcast. I'm Jeff Bergerson, joined by our friend, our stats guy, Eric Dantoff this week, filling in for Zach, who went down to Augusta last week and watched the Masters firsthand. Eric, welcome. Thank you. Stat guy has a face, so. That's uh, right. Thanks. You can find Eric, uh, his screen name on DraftKings is edantoff. Mm -hmm. And his Twitter handle is at Edantoff. Yep. Only to be one in the world. So, well, only one in the world. No one can take it. <laughs> so <laughs> be sure to follow him. Uh, we are with FantasyGolfInsider.com. If you're not a member, go on our site, become a premium member. We got a lot of great content on there. Tons of articles every week and tools to do your research to be a winning DFS golf player. Last week was the Masters. Yeah. Eric, you picked a great week to sub in for Zach. We get mm -hmm. to talk about what happened. Uh, before we get going, I have a, a few uh, shout outs to make. People who yeah. had success last week, our inbox was flooded, our Twitter was flooded with names of who had success. Uh, Bill Armstrong won, Brian Zell, Austin Greenway, Michael Kopinski, Jared Larson, Mark Mercado, uh, Clint Jones took 222nd in the Millie Maker out of 200,000 people. Great accomplishment there. Eric Henriksen, uh, Honey Badger DFS, Tim Collins, one of our mo longest and most loyal members, Daniel Wirth, had a winning week last week. Billy Baru uh, at Dollar Bill 300. DFS Golf Gods took second in the 333 GPP on DraftKings for a cool 30 grand. Wow. That's so nice that's, payday. that's a nice payday. Yeah. Um, as far as our winners for the highest FGI members in the Millie Maker, this is crazy, but they actually tied. Huh. At uh, 79th place, Matt Smith and MLB Syndicate actually tied. They both won 1500 bucks for their accomplishment. To finish in the top 100 is is insane out of 200,000. Yeah. So congrats, guys. Your t-shirts are in the mail. That's that's really awesome. Keep up the great work. I had a guy reach out to me on Twitter. He's been interacting with me using the model. Uh, Steve Buda, um, you know, for some of the guys that maybe not play at DraftKings, he sent me a snapshot of his uh, little wager. He made him Mr. Danny Willett. Yeah. $10 yep. into uh, 1500 So congratulations, Steve. Beautiful. I know Pat <clears throat> Mayo and Jeff Feinberg cashed in huge on Danny Willett because mm -hmm. they bet on him back in February. Yeah. We've been waiting for him to come over yep. from Europe, and uh, we could see the talent. So we expected big things from him. Didn't know that he was going to make such a huge splash at Augusta. But congrats to everyone who won on their wagers out there as well. Yeah. Um, Eric, what was your big takeaway from the Masters? I thought, you know, for the longest time that Spieth was obviously going to be putting on the green jacket again. Yeah, he would have been the first back-to-back -back, uh, person to do that. Um, you know, my res I've always liked Jordan Spieth, but my respect level for him just went higher. The way he handled himself after and answered the questions. And I, a lot of people out there are going to say he choked. I'm going to use what he did and say he collapsed. Um, there's really no other way you could really say what really happened on uh, that uh, quad bogey on 12. But, you know, guys like Danny Willett, I, I was on him in, in DK and, you know, sometimes good things happen to good guys. I think he was ready. I like the father narrative that was going on with him. So sometimes things just happen the way they do. It was pretty amazing uh, toward the end. You could see the fluctuations and I'm watching the, the leaderboard on the Millie Maker and how guys are sitting in first and then someone bogey. So uh, for the longest time, Smiley Kaufman was up yeah, there. Yeah. Before that, Bryson DeChambeau was yeah. up there. And then they start falling apart and falling back and those guys fall out. It's just the slightest little moves when you're talking that many yeah. entries. And it's pretty crazy how uh, you know that board fluctuated. I heard from a couple people who said their name was in green with some big numbers for <laughs> for a long period of time. And makes they, you really start thinking of uh, things you can do, but you got to wait till the end of the last hole. The, it's pretty amazing. Mm. We talked about how you have to have the perfect lineup, and this the, guy did that one. He just about did. But the crazy mm. thing is, he actually had Troy Merritt in his lineup. Yeah, I, and we thought, you know, but we didn't think that, you know, that he would have the top four guys in order with two guys at T two. Then I guess you can afford to have Troy Merritt at T forty three. But I just thought that was pretty amazing that that salary relief move to Troy Merritt at fifty six hundred really paid off. Yeah, and you you had to have 
obviously will it to, to uh, take it down. But Jorgen Spieth in the Millie Maker, criminally under owned. He was less than 10%. Yeah. And people weren't on him probably for the right reasons. And, you know, when he was at that price, I, I wasn't on him. I don't know if you were on him. I had some exposure. Some to exposure. Him. Yep. But I, there was just so much more good value. But you throw the weather in the mix, and next thing you know, it, you know, he's the number one. He's a really good golfer, and his putter kept him in it for the most part. And that goes to show what uh, how good he is on a really bad day. I had uh, my best lineup had a, a Rory Jordan stack mm. with Smiley Kaufman. All six got through the cut. It had Wiesberger on it, and if he could have jumped up, uh, Daniel Berger was on that team, yeah. and Charlie Hoffman. So if it, it, all it took was those three guys yeah. jumping up like uh, Paul Casey and J.B. Holmes did, and I would uh, be cashing the big check, but it was not to be. Yep, 478.5, just looked it up here. That's what the, the million, making, million, million maker lineup was on, on uh, DK. So you have to be perfect. Let that go to show when you're doing GPPs, especially larger field ones, kind of throw ownership a little bit out the window, but obviously you need um, some guys that aren't highly owned that uh, are going to finish at the top. That is correct, sir. So as long as we're talking about uh, Jordan Spieth, we might as well segue right into shots of the week. Mm -hmm. And we got our oh, shots yeah. down below here. And it was set to be, now I had this all ready to go, Thursday afternoon, mm. Ernie Els just pulls an utter, uh, it was just so uncomfortable to watch. For those of you who didn't see it, uh, he's six putted from about mm. three feet. He obviously has the yips, we've seen that before, yeah. but this went to a different level. I felt bad for the guy, because he is such a, a good guy and you hear guys talk about how great he is. Um, but then the collapse heard around the world yeah. from Spieth on 12. And you just have to give it to him because yeah. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The, the first ball, so he comes off four birdies on six, seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. He bogeys 10, bogeys 11. He's still going to win the tournament yeah. right there if he yeah. bounces back. Those are not easy holes, so no big deal. And then in the water, uh, he's still got a chance to regroup, and I thought his caddy, Michael, um, should have probably pulled him to the side and shook him or something or just told him to take a walk uh, just so he could regroup. But then he just absolutely chunked one that I rarely see Jordan yeah. Speed do. He barely made it to the water. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was absolutely shocked. I was screaming. I was, t Twitter was blowing up. Yeah. So it was pretty crazy. So shot of the week, that would be a co-shot of the yeah. week. Ernie yeah. Ells Ernie. Good old Ernie. and Jordan Speed. Yeah. Cheers to you guys. Whew. So what do you think of the shot of the week, your first shot of the week segment? Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, Zachary keeps a nice little uh, uh, stash back here. Oh, that's tasty. Um, <laughs> you all right? Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> you know, for, for you know, I, I kind of look at how everything happened, too, with um, Danny Willett. He was, what, um, four groups ahead of Spieth, was it? Yes. Yeah, something like that. So when you when you think about it, I, I think he was able just to keep a solid game going, maybe get a tied two because you know the the at the Masters down there they don't have the electronic scoreboard, so it's one of those things where he didn't believe it. He thought you know it, it, the number was going to change, and I just think uh, that kind of helped him. He just stuck to his game, probably shooting for maybe a solo two, and then next thing you know it, uh, you know he he just sits in the uh, the clubhouse and. You know, the rest is history. He did something rare in that he doesn't score score that well on the par fives. Yeah. He just did everything else yeah. very, very good. Yeah, bogey-free final rounds. Yeah, so. it was unbelievable. And I'm getting, uh, or I, get, I heard from Zachary, and I'm sure he'll tell you about it next week on the webcast, but he actually went to the course at 5.30, and at Augusta you can set up chairs and people aren't going to move them. Right. So he set it up on the 18th green, and then he also bought another chair and set it up somewhere else so he could watch that. And uh, so he saw it firsthand, which was pretty cool. That is cool. But he couldn't he couldn't use his phone on the course. I guess you can't, can't have bring him. it on Augusta. Old I wouldn't school. know. I've never been there. So yeah, maybe one day. What the hell? Um, he did win in Wacky Wagers, though. I oh. need to talk about that. Yeah. He beat a good friend of ours and member, Keith Wire, last week. And we are now the proud owners of the Dwight Schrute bobblehead. 
which oh, is classic. awesome. Classic. Yes, I am really looking forward to that. So hopefully that'll be displayed maybe next week for our webcast. Yeah, someone's got the uh, Michael Scott one to go with it. Uh, <laughs> that should be a wacky wager we should accept. So, yes. So if you have something that you want to put up for wacky wagers against Zachary, tweet it to us or email us a picture, uh, and uh, we'll uh, battle it out. Heads up, and uh, and uh, we'll uh, you can win some FGI swag or something yes. like that. So enough about the Masters, yes. Eric. Let's turn the page to Harbor Town, the RBC Heritage this week. Down in South Carolina. Uh, down in South Carolina. Um, Harbor Town Golf Links, 7,101 yards. It's a par 71. So we're going to see a lot of the bonus uh, of rounds under 70 this week on DraftKings. It's one of the shortest layouts on the PGA Tour during the course of the year. It's a Pete Dye design along with Jack Nicholas. Yep. Very narrow fairways, and um, they're lined with trees. And if you get off the beaten path, you're going to end up punching out. Yep. So it's going to favor guys who are accurate off the tee, very small greens, contoured mm -hmm. greens. So guys who are accurate on their approach shots. Yep. Uh, the bombers don't come to Harbor Town. Right. You, you don't see DJ in the field. You don't see Bubba. You don't see JB Holmes. They don't want to play here. Yep. Uh, you see a lot more of the the managers of uh, of the golf ball. The guys who are going to be more accurate. Um, putters obviously yep. have a yep. have a big advantage, and we see in the stats that they do well. The key stats this week we're looking at strokes gained tee to green as every week. Uh, driving accuracy. Normally, I don't look at driving right. accuracy just because it's included in stroke scan tee to green, but I want a premium on accuracy yep. this week because there is such a punishment for going off the fairway. Yep. And we saw a little bit of that actually in at the Masters when we when I did the model. We actually emphasize, em, emphasize driving distance a little bit. Yeah, strokes gain, absolutely. T, stroke scan tee to green is an all encompassing stat, guys. So it's one of those things where whenever something kind of gets you know focused on. Uh, that's usually something I look at a little bit more yeah, in depth. Yeah, for sure. Yep, greens and regulation is yep. another stat, yep. proximity to the hole. All of those mm -hmm. I'm putting an emphasis on yep. this week, as well as scrambling too. So if you're not going to be accurate with your approach game, you better be able to scramble, and yep. those are the guys you see do well year after year here. We also, obviously I said putting, so we're going to do strokes gain putting as yep. well. You can kind of see with the field the kind of player that does well here. You look at tournament history, you look at who's playing this week, and there's a similar theme throughout yeah, yep. as those guys who are accurate, not necessarily bombers. Yep. When I'm build, building the model here, I, I kind of did a take two because it reminded me of that uh, field when we had no studs and uh, what Dirt McGirt was. Uh, Puerto Rico. Yeah, down in Puerto Rico. Yep. So uh, finding some similarities with some names coming to the top with, with stats um, with that. So uh, I'll have that ready for you guys, obviously. Uh, hopefully by the end of the night, you guys can use that. Uh, but look at those guys and start emphasizing those those key stats if you're if you're using the model um a corollary course that i like to compare with is copperhead and mm -hmm. the valspar which happened several weeks ago take a look at that field see who does well there as well it's the same type of player and, and mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of those same names playing here yeah. this week why don't we start at the top eric and look at the top studs who are you looking at this week who are you liking in that top tier well He's the most expensive guy, and I think rightfully so. Jason Day, uh, I think he's just going to come out here and dominate, actually. It's one of those things where he's the, the best golfer of this field by far. His price reflects that. Uh, I think there's enough value out there to sneak him in, which we'll get into later. But this is where this is his type of course and his type of game, and if you look at the competition, I think that he's just going to want to get that current form going again and okay. get ready for the next uh, next big one. Okay, um, I am going to disagree with you. Oh, um, I'm going to be doing a little day fade this week, and the reason is is because I think he's going to be the highest owned guy That's in the true. field and in GPPs. Uh, I'm going to fade him because I think he's going to be owned by 20-some percent, maybe even 30% of the field yeah. this week. He's coming off the Masters. Um, he didn't play all that tremendously in the Masters. He didn't finish bad, but I think that's just a fact that he is just that elite of a player that he kind of brought yeah. his B game and still played well. I don't know. I, it's kind of weird why he's playing this week. Um, Spieth normally plays here. 
Uh, he needs and, a little time to recover. <laughs> yeah, he does need to recover from that. But So I'm going to fade day a little bit. I like some other names yep. in that top tier. I like Brant Snedeker this week. Yeah, He's been hot this year. Mm -hmm. He's you know, He won at Farmer. He's got four other yep. top tens. Great current form. Looked good at the Masters last week. Elite putter, great uh, tee to green game, accuracy wise. So I'm going to be looking. I'm going to be going with a lot of um, him this week. I also like Kevin Kisner as well. Mm -hmm. He showed that he can play well. Made the playoff last year. Finished, you know, runner up to Jim Furyk in the playoff. But his uh, his game really fits well on this course. Um, he hasn't been playing great lately, right. but I think he's going to pull it together this week. And the other name that I like up top is Bill Haas. Mm. I mentioned Copperhead as a corollary course. He had his best finish at Copperhead a few weeks ago where he finished runner-up to Schwartzel in the playoff. Yep. So I think Bill Haas is a legit play here. He hasn't had the elite finish that um, some guys have had here, but I think this year he could, and he's only 9,100 this week. Mm -hmm. So I think if you drop below those top 10, 11 guys, um, or actually he might, he might be 10th, uh, that he is uh, gonna give you some good value in that top tier. Yeah, we can't, can't sleep on a guy named Paul Casey either. Um, no doubt. If you can deal with some withdrawal history or whatever. I'd be happy to put him to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's one of those things where his his game translates perfectly here. If you're looking for a ba balanced lineup approach, um, you know I, I will say I think Jason Day is a good cash game approach. So it's one of those things depending on uh, your your style of play. Um, I personally play a little bit more cash game, um, kind of more of a time thing for me because you know building a ton of lineups and try to navigate your way to the top. So I kind of look at if I'm in a you know maybe a 20 person field and I think Jason Day is going to win it. Well, points our points and yeah. uh, it's one of those things but again just going back to paul casey just you know he's he's right up there three uh, straight three straight top tens yeah, yeah. uh so, yeah i think there's no tweak in the back well. i mean you know if he wants to finish this out he, he could be playing sunday for yeah sure. we talked about this a little last week zach said you know when he's at the masters you know he's not going to withdraw yeah. but if he's at the rbc heritage i'm not so sure so i'm a little bit hesitant obviously i have a little bias but that's all right i yeah. had him i had <laughs> some exposure to him at the masters i can put that aside yeah. we got to separate our emotions from uh just wanting to win yeah. so um, I think he's a legit play though this week. He's just been playing that good and his game sets up well. Obviously yeah. he's ranked high in your model this week. Yeah. So. And and I'm the I'm the type of guy who, you know, when I'm doing the stats for you guys, I you know, predicting injuries, I kind of put withdrawals a little bit in that. Uh, it's one of those things I look at if these guys are in the field, um, you know, I don't think they want that black mark kind of on their name. I know it happens a little bit, but again, Paul Casey, I, I, I like him for both cash and, and GPP. So dropping down to the middle tier, uh, a couple guys that I'm looking at this week. I do think Luke Donald is going yeah. to draw the attention of the masses because of his outstanding tournament history. A lot of top fives in the past several years. Uh, 8,300 is a reasonable price. He's been making cuts for the most part this year. His game seems to be uh, some semblance of his game seems to be coming back from when he was good a few years ago. Yep. Uh, I do like him in cash games, though. I think he's, you know, like I mentioned, Copperhead again. He's an, he's one of those guys who plays well at Copperhead as well. And I think he's going to give you a legitimate cut maker, some upside. But for cash games, I think that's a legit play at 8,300. I also like Ryan Palmer at 7,700. I think mm -hmm. he's going to give you some stability. He's made every single cut this year. His game, I think it sets up decent for Heritage. It's mm -hmm. not uh, outstanding, but I think that's a pretty reasonable play in that middle tier as well. What are you thinking? Yeah, you know, a guy that uh, is right at top of the model, the way we, we uh, weight the recent five years, uh, Matt Kuchar is at the top for for uh, an upper tier guy again. If you're looking to kind of kind of find a different name in that 10K range, I, I personally like him a lot. A um, couple other guys that are up there too. Um, I don't know how far you want to dip. Well, who down. are you liking in the middle tier? Oh, the middle tier. Yeah. Um, you know, the two guys that are kind of sneaky up there with good course history right now, Graham McDowell and Russell Knox. So I like McDowell this week. Yeah. He's had great success at RBC Heritage in the past. Yeah. He's shown some flashback to um, yesteryear. Yeah. Uh, so I think he's legit, and I think that's a reasonable price at 8500 So I agree with you there. Yeah. And he usually plays well in RBC events. Yeah. So 
There you uh, go. He's got to do well for his uh, sponsor and who pays the bills. That's that's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see that often, actually. All those RBC guys like Snedeker and mm -hmm. McDowell and Kucher and uh, who else? I don't even know who else. Oh, I think Donald actually is another RBC well, there guy. There you go. In RBC <laughs> events, so Canadian Open is another we'll one. That a new element to the model with That's right. sponsorship rates or something. <laughs> no doubt. So the Under Armour Open, you yeah. can have Spieth. But yeah. um, Russell Henley, I think, is a sneaky pick at 8100. He was awful for a long stretch, but he seemed to bounce back his last time mm -hmm. out. So I think he's legit. I think his game sets up well here. He burned me big time last yeah. year. Yeah, it was yeah. harsh when he missed the cut, yeah. but. Um, and another guy at 8,000, Bryson DeChambeau. We oh. saw a little bit of, of what this guy yeah. can do. I've been talking about him for weeks now. What's his story? Isn't his swing this, um, I was hearing about it as I was gearing up for the Masters here, is his swing is this crazy one that's just built off of stats and cameras or something like that? Or Well, he, he, he actually uses the same length irons, which is nuts. Yeah. You know, all the same length, yeah. which is crazy. But he's this freak talent. Yeah. We obviously saw that. He won the U.S. Amateur, won the National Championship. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think he was going to be phased. People are like, oh, it's his first Masters. And let's talk about that, yeah. too, because people were saying, uh, oh, if it's your first Masters, you can't take him. I said, no, Smiley. let's let's yeah. let's overlook that yep. because we saw th that went right out the window yep. this past week. So. Um, but Bryson DeChambeau is yeah. a freak talent who wasn't thrown off by the atmosphere at Augusta, and I don't think he's going to be thrown off. This is his first pro event this week. Uh, he's no longer an amateur. He's all grown up. Yeah. So I think he's going to uh, do some damage this year on the PGA Tour. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where if you're ready to, to kind of take the plunge on a guy like that, I mean, he's he's at 8000 bucks. So it's one of those things where you kind of think sometimes, you know, a guy that's still kind of up and coming, isn't that high yet? He's surrounded by some guys that uh, have a you know a lot more PGA Tour experience and um, you know playing on this type of a course. But you know we've seen it happen before. Sometimes when guys are good, they're good. And you know I think he's all about. He, if you saw him at the on the camera when he's going to interview at the Masters, he almost had a bigger grin than than Danny Willett. Um, with how with how well he performed at the Masters, so so I'm writing down. I'm doing my research yeah. on Friday night. I'm I'm starting to dive into RBC Heritage. And Matthew Fitzpatrick is just lighting up my 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 stats and everything else, and I have him targeted. And then the weekend comes. Now I was high on Fitzpatrick coming into the Masters, yeah. So he was in my GPP core. I had about forty percent exposure to sure. him. Unfortunately, in the Millie Maker, he was paired with the wrong guys, and he just didn't match up. So I didn't have a shot in the Millie Maker. So it was one of those times where you're kind of rooting against the guy that you yeah, have yep. so you can have him the next week yep. and I'm like god damn it he's playing <laughs> too well over the weekend he jolts up the leaderboard yep. cats out of the bag on this guy and his price goes up too and yep. now he's in the top 10 price yeah. this week so I was pretty pissed off that uh, he did well last week even though I had him on a lot of rosters because I've had him several events now on the PGA Tour yep. this year yep. legit legit talent yep. so um, going down the line uh, who are you liking in the lower tier this week? I know you're a Dirt McGirt guy. Yes, you know, he's he's been... Say what you want, Zachary, when you see this, but uh, <laughs> I can handle Dirt McGirt. Uh, he's proved himself uh, enough um, to make sometimes the optimal model. Uh, a couple of you guys some cash. You know, and, and when you can find the right scenario for Dirt... Um, Is this the right scenario? I think so. Okay. I mean, right. I've been surprised. You guys have been surprised by this, but... You know, he's coming up there with the stats that we're looking at, and I think it's one of those things that if he just has his head screwed on straight for the first uh, first couple days, I mean, I, I think he can be someone that could easily, you know, top 20, top 10. You know, I don't think he's going to win it, but it's one of those things where his skill translates here. He has come up on the optimal lineup. Now, I tend to go away from dirt in cash games, yeah. even though the optimal says it. Yeah. I have you, you know, zero him out and not yeah. allow him into the optimal sometimes just because he is incredibly streaky. Yeah. And he and we've seen him just yeah. plummet and miss the cut. So I don't like him in cash games. I don't generally like him in I know, general, I know. but this week I kind of do. Yeah, huh? uh, I think he's a legit play at 7,100. He's a yeah. South Carolina guy. He's yeah. had success here. I think his game fits well. Your stats yeah. you know, say he lines up well. So I'm on board this week, not in cash, yeah. just in GPP. Yeah, so. and I'll just say this too. We, we talked a little about that, and I don't know how much uh, the FGI users think about 
cash and GPP. Uh, I'll just say from being a stats guy with you guys now for from the beginning of the season, I've seen a lot of variance uh, with this. In and golf? Yeah, no, no, it's up no, there with baseball. No variance. Yeah, I'm a big baseball guy too, which is a very extremely high variance sport. But here you're looking at scenarios where, you know, you got DeChambeau, you know, doing so well at the Masters and a guy, Ricky Fowler, who I was very heavy on. And it's one of those things where sometimes a, uh, it's a fine line. I talked with Zachary about this. It's a fine line a little bit between a GPP no and a cash lineup. So yeah. just, just think about that. Um, just want to touch on Jason Bone, though, too, just because uh, ah, I feel... Ah, Jason Bone. Yeah, okay. you know, I, I, when I found out he WD'd, um, you know, it's, it just changes your perspective. Like, sometimes people, when they say that, they, they you know, they're like, oh, why'd you withdraw? Well, it was kind of a serious deal, so... I, it wasn't I, a hangnail like I know. Paul Casey. It was a goddamn heart attack. Yeah, so and it was a serious legit. one. Yeah, so I'm very curious to see how he does. I, I, you know, I'm not at a point I can recommend him for cash. I, in this case, cash. Uh, for sure, GPP because I think everybody's going to do a wait and see. But yes, his his, his game translates very I well to agree. this type of course. I so. totally agree. I'm on board with Jason board, Bone this week because I, I'm on Bone with Board. Uh, <laughs> oh. um, I do like him this week because I do think he's going to be under owned because people are going to be leery of yeah. him because of that heart yep. attack. I've but, seen it happen before. They always kind of have the wait and see. Well, if you're the one that can. Yeah, but here's the, of it. here's the deal. The guy's not going to be out playing if he wasn't medically cleared That's by doctors. It, it was a heart attack. Yep. It wasn't, you know, uh, a sore elbow or right, something right. where it could uh, come back up and start lingering or something yeah. like that. So if he's cleared to play, I think he's ready to go. Yeah. Uh, I don't have too many worries about that. I think that's legit down there. I also like Jerry Kelly at 6,800. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's going to give you a lot of cut making, yeah. you know, cut making ability. Some salary relief. Yeah. He's you know he's only missed one cut this year. He, he's made the last six at RBC Heritage. Yep. So how does he come up on the stats? Uh, he's obviously a good accuracy guy. Um, with with Kelly on stats so far, our emphasis. Now the the key thing with him, he's going to make the optimal more than likely based on his course history. Yeah, um, it's one of those things where. Stats are, are good enough. So it's one of those things where how he's relatively comparing to the field. So if you guys read my first column, which I appreciate if you did, uh, I'm going to help you guys out in identifying a couple key things, uh, key stats that they're good at. If you're looking at a guy like Jerry Kelly, nothing really is going to stand out at you, except if you start looking at his driving accuracy. Uh, he's right up there. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So, he's legit. You know, and when, when we put that extra emphasis on that outside of just your strokes gained, um, I think there's a reason why he has good course history here, and, and he offers that cut-making ability. Not a lot of upside, but you know what? Sometimes you just need someone that'll get it through, and next thing you know, it, you'll be you'll be set if you can get six through on a, on a good GPP lineup. Any interest in Jim Herman this week? So he's coming off of a poor performance at the Masters after his improbable win the week before. I thought there would be a letdown on the Masters. I had zero exposure to Herman, but this week, this course kind of fits his game well. He's a greens hitter. Uh, I think he could do well, and he's only 6,500. Uh, uh, any interest in him? Yeah, uh, again, looking at the key stats, um, drive and accuracy is right up there. Greens and regulation is right up there. Yeah. Um, you know, it, and it's one of those things where, you know, the bounce back is, is, you know, happens all the time, and it's one of those things where uh, you, you got to find these guys in the right spot. That's one thing I've learned from you guys and doing the golf and the stats for you guys is, the course means a lot to these type of golfers, and you can tell by this field which ones want to be here. Um, so I, I actually think that he has a, he has a good shot of, of, of doing that. So if you're trying to do a whole stars and scrubs approach, you know, you got him and Kelly, you know, go have some fun with uh, Day and Casey, Kucher, whoever you want, you know. I think uh, there's also the fact of, you know, the factor is lightning strikes every once in a while. Yeah. And we've seen that yeah. happen. Yep. I call Vaughn Taylor dog shit, and he yep. wins a PGA Tour event. The guy hasn't sniffed making a cut since yeah. then. He's not a great player, uh, but every once in a while, lightning strikes. Yep. And Jim Herman, you know, wins a PGA event for the first time in his life. Yep. Is that going to happen again? I don't know. Maybe, probably not though. And I think he's going to go back to where he belongs and just being a cut maker sometimes. Yeah. And uh, I don't think he's going to be a contender long term. No, so, no. anyone know. else in the lower tier who you want to point out or you want to just make everyone uh, come to the site and check out the rest? Um, well, I'll, I'll do another uh, write up again based on the model once it's all, uh, all done. But if we're looking at, again, stats alone, which, you know, again, I'm, the, I'm your stats guy. 
you know, a, a name. I can't that, tell just because you're staring at your computer yeah. all the time. Well, that helps me. That's where my thoughts are and <laughs> like that. But I talked about him once on Twitter, and I know you guys are going to laugh at this because of his mustache, but it's one of those things where Johnson Wagner. And oh, his, Lord almighty. If he figures it out, though, it's one of those things where he has the stats based on uh, uh, last year and a little bit this year that if he can figure it out, he's another guy that's – Pure GPP play. Trust okay. me. All right. It's not one of those things, but I go when you. I, I've I've learned from doing this model for you guys that guys are up there when we wait these for a reason. And you just said lightning strikes, and he, <laughs> he did. <laughs> Fair did enough. he have a decent bounce back at the uh, before the Masters? What was that one? Because no one was on him, and then he's missed all these cuts. So I'm also <laughs> kind of thinking the law of averages need to start coming back to play. So send your complaints to. At E. Dantoft yeah. on Twitter for Johnson Wagner recommendation. And if he wins it, you you tell the whole world that I was the one who told you about him. If he if he wins it, you can sit in the middle of me and Zach here next week. What do you think of that? Oh, okay. All right. I, I, how about a top five? That's a little more realistic. No, no. Okay. He has to win. It. He has got to win. Strike. It. He's got to win okay. it. And you can sit. You can. I don't. You can wear the cowboy hat. You can do whatever you like <laughs> next just, week. Yeah, you can, I'll just. You name it, buddy. Yeah, if Johnson I'll just Wagner wins this. Start tournament. working on the other uh, top shelf stuff. Here now, if I call guys. him dog shit, he might have a chance. Yeah, that's usually what happens with you guys. You guys are kind of that. Uh, we have that dark magic. Yeah. So on Twitter, <laughs> I'm talking to uh, um, who was I talking? Oh, Perry. Uh, from Project Roto yeah. yesterday, and he's saying, all right, we need you to whip out this dark magic. Yep. And I know Zach is on the course. Yeah. I, I don't know because I'm not communicating, but I can sense. <laughs> I can sense what Zach is thinking, and I'm thinking, yeah, J Jordan Spieth, here comes the jinx, yeah. and something like that happens. So yeah. people who don't believe in our black it's real, magic people. It's legion real. of gloom, yeah. yeah, you better Whenever recognize. they say that, I usually just X that name off of my, uh, off my list and then uh, Pretty sick powers. Yeah. So... Well, I think that'll be all. Cool. If you have any questions for us, be sure to email us at info at fantasygolfinsider.com. Also, this is uh, in uh, podcast form on iTunes, so be sure to check us out there. Give us a five-star review. Be sure to subscribe to our yeah. YouTube channel as well. You can reach us at Fantasy Golfers on Twitter. We usually do Periscope on Wednesdays. I know Roger did it last week because Zach was in Augusta. Zach yeah. usually does it on Wednesday nights, so tune into Periscope there. That's all. Yeah. RBC Heritage, how does it feel uh, after your first episode is under your belt? You know, like I said, it's that guy. You guys need to have a name with the face, so hopefully my ugly mug didn't, uh, you know. Oh, it definitely distracted. Yeah, well. Like I said, uh, keep the feedback coming. It was great to work with you. Thanks for letting me be on set here. So uh, maybe again next time. Absolutely. RBC Heritage this week. Good luck, everybody. Let us know how you're doing, and we'll talk to you next week. Good luck. <laughs>